jack of all trades. I'm glad that he landed in poetry because his po his poems are great. His songs with Chuck Prophet are fantastic. Uh, he co-produces this gorgeous uh, mm -hmm. quarterly four by two with Jeremy Galti, formerly of Yakima. And I am just delighted that he is here tonight to read for us. So, Kurt, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to, uh, at some point, show you some of these 4 by 2s because it's now, uh, it's, it's got a circulation of 300, and it's uh, internationally distributed. We have subscribers in seven countries. And I was here in 2013 to read with uh, would read with Dan Peters and Jeremy Galky and I went out. Is there a place called Zesta Cochina or something? <laughs> we went we went to a brew pub. Jeremy and his then girlfriend Kara, now wife, we went there and we uh, hatched the idea of four by two at that time. So in in Yakima. So I was remember so uh, Yakima means a lot to me for other reasons and for that reason and. Uh, I'm going to start off uh, with, it's a, with a working vacation. We visited our sins who had families of their own and pets named after us. <laughs> On silly noise. The world is too big and too small all at once. One minute I'm a genius, the next I'm a dunce. If I knew when to quit, I would have quit long ago. If I knew how to fit in, I would have done so. And I'm going to read the invocation poem uh, from A Visit to the Ranch and other poems. Uh, my uh, new book just out that is put out by uh, Last Word Press and Handmade in Olympia, Washington. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the book. Uh, as, uh, as I read, but this is the invocation poem. Dear Diary, the light changed, the season changed, the century. Lilies outlasted churches, deciphered rhymes on the backs of bank statements, toppled regimes, an amulet adorned a most unmatronly ankle. The rose changed its name and smelled sweeter, my eye healed. A man married a bridge, and they had many rivers. <laughs> that's, the, that's the invocation poem. And uh, I'm going to read a few poems from uh, earlier books. Uh, this, uh, Twilight of the Male Ego, was published in 2002 by a guy in uh, Walla Walla whose name is Charles Potts, who uh, is sort of the, uh, who, who plays a, a central role in A Visit to the Ranch. A Visit to the Ranch is about a visit to his ranch. And anyway, this, uh, and so he uh, is sort of responsible for whatever semblance of a poetry career for launching whatever I had. And I'm gonna read this one um, really for Jim Bodine. This is um, called Streets and, this is written in 1974. Hmm. Before I was born. But, um, mm -hmm. uh, streets and gardens. The answer was so simple and so lacking in clamor that I was careful not to give the secret away. And uh, the source of that quote is Neftali Reyes, which was the birth name of Pablo Neruda. Streets and gardens. Oh, Pablo, the wind in your cape as you fly through the Andes and your lifetimes by the sea. The coin on my floor with the president's face, the radio dial shining blue in my dark. I would gladly trade my heater for a television. Oh, Pablo, they say the coup took your last will to live. My government underwrites the slaughter. The girl in the south of the state, if I try, I can conjure her face for a millisecond. Still, I hear her laughing. Oh, Pablo, the famous poets have run dry. They have learned along the way what to do now. The doors that won't close flush in this old building. A dictionary filled with food and numbers. Cages that keep the world out. Oh, Pablo, 
The wind in your cape as you fly through the Andes and your lifetimes by the sea. Looking for your name, I have driven through streets and gardens. And uh, this, well, I, I always, I always end up reading this poem, and uh, this is part of always. And uh, <laughs> it, and I, and uh, I don't know why I have to mark it because it's called Funich. It's about Annette Funicello who had multiple sclerosis, and it's uh, Funicello at fifty, and it ended up on page fifty of the book. Mm. So it's kind of easy to find. <laughs> uh, um, Funicello at fifty. Annette has MS. She needs Mickey's help out of the limo and onto the boulevard. She has come to christen her star, the 1,990th star on Hollywood Boulevard. She uses a walker to walk, but today her hub takes an arm, her mouse takes an arm, and she walks the walk of fame and stands over her star amidst all the hoopla and thanks Walt Disney and cries and is thrilled. Walt didn't make it. The dead are like that. But Frankie showed up, and 300 fans. Mouseketeers are forever, when TV was new. MS causes cripples like TV itself. Degenerative, still no cure. Look, see the treasure chest so many would have died to pick the lock, almost a separate self, now indivisible part of a whole grandmother, well-stocked kitchen shelf. The years bursting with years, the vanished dream glistens intact. A silo spills surplus youth, and no war, no death bug to call the boom crop under a full-bodied Southern Cal sun, pre-implants, pre-sunblock, pink grapefruit nipples, puppy love sand dollar starfish, blown curfew, skinny dock dipping, redondo moonlight, the hymen maneuver, mythical sweethearts waiting. We never change. Never change, never change, as our friends age landlocked and dull, watching their news magazines. Tonight, the domed man-made beach in Japan, near where Mickey jobs out his watches, and they job them out again. Put on your ears, Annette. Frankie, strip down to your shorts. No more school bells, no more books. On some far coast, the surf's up. And this, uh, these are, I'm going to read two poems, two uh, urban poems, two San Francisco poems from a book called The Good Neighbor Policy. And this is uh, set in a bar. He looked out the window and said, See how blue the sky is when I'm not drinking? That's the color of my eyes. And, uh, and this is uh, about, uh, well, living... Uh, I, I had a I had a VW van in San Francisco that I ended up getting rid of because um, you come home at uh, you come home late and you just end up circling and circling hoping somebody uh, has a fight with their girlfriend or something and vacates a parking space so you have a place and so you're you're thinking bad thoughts about hoping bad things happen to other people so you have somewhere to park for the night <laughs> and um, and uh, so uh, anyways this is called but this is uh, in the morning. Um, when the cars wake you up. The world at my feet. Below my window, someone trying to start a car, 5.30 in the morning. Alternately, at the pedal and under the hood, gently, gently. Come on, baby, he coos, as if coaxing his beloved up those last steep rungs to completion. From the slam of the hood, it's a truck. He's out of here. The spot stays empty, maybe 45 seconds. Doors slam, female voices uncontrollably laughing, 5.47 in the morning. <laughs> we live in the back of the building now. So. <laughs> and I'm going to read uh, a few pieces uh, from this Drawn and Quartered Moon, which uh, I was uh, reading in support of last time I came up here, and uh, Emily still has a few copies left that uh, um, and uh, this is called the re-election of God 1999 San Francisco re-election of God 1999 San Francisco Christmas Day not a cloud in the deep blue sky no wise men on display not a shred of fleece to blow away the millennium Christ quits with us 
Every child, every crossing guard, an entrepreneur, will the chain letter be unbroken? The pollster asked, does God exist? 71% of us said yes, and this is a democracy, and that, friends, is a landslide. <laughs> the Red Wheelbarrow of Fortune. And this is it's the, the Red Wheelbarrow is the, uh, the uh, famous uh, uh, William Carlos Williams poem that a lot of people, you know, that when Mike Wallace interviewed him, he sort of accused him of it not being a poem, you know. And so, um, anyway, called The Red Wheelbarrow of Fortune. And uh, this goes back, as you'll see, the, 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 the president. Pope John Paul is in Jordan, President Bill in Dakar. I'm here at SFO, wishing on an airport bar. Wishing on an airport barmaid, that would get me nowhere quick. Numbers lie to other numbers, hand me down my swizzle stick. We are all in constant motion, even as we sit and wait. Deep inside, we tick like watches, never stopping, always late. Children cheer a flag on fire, a car commercial ends. Hearts of darkness fill with light. The wind is up. So much depends. Uh, I'm going to, uh, this, uh, I mean, some of you, I think, are uh, actually subscribers. This is the new, uh, this is the new 4x2, and uh, uh, you, it would be nice if you bought my new book, but regardless, this is free. So, this is, I'm not selling these, I'm giving this away, and shouldn't say that because there are people here who pay for it. But anyway, um, but uh, um, yeah, it's, it's, I just talked to Jeremy and it's in the mail. I just saw it for the first time today. Okay. But talk about that outside. Okay. Anyway, the complaint department is closed. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, but this, and so uh, there's always uh, some poems by me and more poems by somebody else. And the, uh, and this is the West by Northwest issue. And the other poet is a fantastic uh, character named Michael Earl Craig, who uh, finished his MFA and decided that he'd had enough of academia and moved to Montana and became a farrier. But, uh, you, maybe there's probably somebody in this room that doesn't know what a farrier is, is there? Because I, I didn't. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. It's like this guy. This this horse over here. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's a horse. It's a horseshoe doctor. So. That's, that's what, uh, I, I didn't, uh, I'm, I'm an uh, autodidact, self-educated, and so that's what, that's what uh, creative writing did to this guy, is, you know, made him become, but so I, I came that close to becoming a farrier, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, uh, so I'm going to read uh, uh, some poems from the new book, which is a, which is a, a uh, concise collection of, about 12 years of my uh, Northwest poetry, and it started out, it started to be a, uh, a, a sort of a tribute to my uh, publisher and mentor of a sort, uh, Charles Potts in, in Walla Walla, and that's pretty much what uh, originally uh, saw me uh, coming through Yakima. I knew Jeremy, but people um, in, in San Francisco wonder uh, what, why I would you know, go to a, a, a relatively small town that's off the beaten path like Yakima, and they didn't realize that I'm on the way to the metropolis of Walla Walla. <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 I may be the only person in San Francisco who's been to Walla four times. So. <laughs> anyway, so I had a lot of poems uh, about Charles and Walla Walla because I tend to, uh, I tend to write about people. I, uh, I'm a, I, I, I gravitated toward uh, uh, Robert Browning and Edgar Lee Masters and uh, Edwin Arlington Robbins and uh, all very sexy figures in contemporary <laughs> poetry. I mean, it, 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 barely a day goes by and somebody's not mentioning Edwin Arlington Robbins. I can tell you. Um, but uh, anyway, I, I uh, and so it, it and I expanded it into uh, poems about the, into poems about the Northwest, and you know there's 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 uh, 
poem set in Portland, Seattle, a little poem set in Arbuckle and uh, the Dalles, and it's sort of uh, Whistler, and so there's, there's things that are, and I, let me, uh, let's see, and this is called a triolet for a new American century, and uh, the, the, a triolet is a, um, a French form, <coughs> and the, the new American century, that was uh, uh, Dick Cheney's fever dream, if you remember, of what was gonna, of, of what was gonna happen after we freed Iraq. Anyway, this is written in 2005. So, uh, Trilay for a New American Century. The, uh, the dog in the truck on the freeway at night switching lanes back and forth by the moon. An occasional bug on four wheels left or right. The dog in the truck on the freeway at night past frontage board. Frontage road billboarded nothing in spite of a, a sky like a dartboard cartoon. The dove mourns in French and the hawk rules the night. A cash cow jumps over the moon. <laughs> and uh, this is a, is, is a poem actually uh, about um, Charles Potts and about visiting him. And it's called The Early, and it was, ac and it was actually in uh, Weathered Pages, uh, Blue Begonia Press's anthology, and uh, a, a poetry poll, poetry, called The Early Bird Catches the World. The philosophy chair from Whitman College rollerblades past us in a black beekeeper's mask. We are here to greet the dawn with Charles Potts on his weekly constitutional up Mill Creek to the Army Corps of Engineers dam and back. Elderberry trees along the asphalt path bear fruit. Herons, mallards, cranes. Sunday solemn, Sunday silent. It's we who can't shut up. Bukowski is a tough sell with Jensen. Potts piles on a slant. He wins, he gloats. Ruthke may be royalty up here, but Charles leaves him stranded up a hundred-year-old beech tree, crooning look at me to birds of prey in Nelson Riddle time. And then there's Philip Larkin, off the grid, a blighted branch, a windless bag. Potts dismisses the UNESCO, tosses Corso in the creek. His lawyer cycles by that lazy shark, a September streak chasing October. We departed in full dark. The risen sun sheds reams of light. Charles unspools a yarn about a prison guard, his guilt, his suicide. Charles, back from two years in Japan, saw the widow and said, say hello to Monty, her face looked like I slapped her. Now the day. So, and uh, this is uh, this is another. Uh, I remember another poem about Charles Potts, who is uh, um, from Idaho and has a has, and has a uh, libertarian streak, but uh, the, 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 the good kind, the left wing. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a. Uh, uh, um, Anyway, uh, the, the view from Mount Forgotten. Charles Potts, his anti-government blood, generations strong, does not hold his breath for the center to hold. He unleashes an edge man's song. Rises at five to consider the sun, robs himself blind while he naps, retraces his own lost interiors for names washed away on old maps. Climbs Mount Forgotten, to drop death a line, family and weather permitting. Misfiles the time he's making up for, daydreams a book in one sitting. Generation strong, anti-government blood runs through Potts River, his veins, transmit their edge man's cry in the key of what thou lovest well remains. How am I doing for time? I don't like to look at the you got all the time in the world. Okay. Well, you know, I, 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 I usually have a, 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 a watch, and it's it's uh, it's 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 really uh, impolite in the worst way to look at a to, to, to look at a watch when you're in front of an audience. So I'm gonna I am gonna digress, and uh, <laughs> I'm gonna digress and tell you about uh, my friend Bob Higgins, who is uh, Carlos Santana's. Uh, uh, he does live video for Carlos Santana. On, on those big LED screens, and Bob is a 
just kind of a, a monster of, of uh, enthusiasm for his job. And so some of the stuff is pre-recorded, and then you know he's responsible for uh, putting on the LED screen, going from musician to musician, and making Carlos Santana look good, and you know, like, I mean, <coughs> and uh, again, catching what's good side, not bad side. And there was a um, a bass player who he noticed uh, looking at his watch on stage, <laughs> and he uh, uh, parked the cam, he he, he he parked the video camera on him. And uh, got him fired. <laughs> anyway, I'm not. I'm not saying it was the right thing to do. I'm saying he did get. Uh, yeah. He, it, uh, I mean, uh, yeah. And so anyway, and so it's, it's, you don't want to be looking at your boy watch on stage. Um, it's not a good thing, you know. I, 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 well, he's my friend. I kind of. I know it's. It's a, I, people. I, I, I tell people that they kind of grow, you know. But uh, it's like you want. To, you want people to think you're. In, you know, you're part of the experience you're doing. You know, so you don't want to be clock. You don't want to be a clock watcher. And uh, th this is um, a uh, this this uh, poem in the book goes pretty far back. Um, it's called "This Year's Second Coming," and it's a uh, well, kind of a parody. It's a parody of Yeats's uh, Second Coming, and it, it it goes back to when uh, uh, Seattle was the uh, became kind of the holy grail for musicians, and so it's said in Seattle called This Year's Second Coming. Spinning and spinning at the Renaissance Fair, the monkey cannot hear the organ grinder. Lives fall apart, the ego takes the wheel. Bad action flicks are dumped on the third world. The poison stream is dammed and down below, the economy of arrogance drones on. The best are clinically despondent while the rest crowd surf and trademarked logo revelry. Surely the next Kurt Cobain inches close. Maybe this year's second coming has 11 toes. This year's second coming. Spill my can of PBR on a biker's chick and watch me run into her fist. <laughs> As in what Lumbertown garage, a boy with a slouch and no job and two dads, a stare dull and solid as a handgun, his scissoring slim thighs, well by this table saw, sticks fly until the drummer's fingers bleed. The volume wakes the dead, but let's admit that 20 years of classic rock was a poor substitute for revolution. And what frail dude, his tape remixed again, slackens off to Seattle to get signed. So. <laughs> um, I'm gonna. Well, this is a this is in a different register, and it it it, it has kind of a it, it, to me it has a little bit of a northwest feel, and it's called free translation of Dufu from memory, and I think I put it in here because in my lifetime you know, the, the the two major I think Tang poets were Li Po, and and I thought it was uh, it was Tufu T U F U. And sometime around uh, when I but uh, when I was thirty, they changed the spelling to Dufu. So and then you know that happens if you live long enough. Well, <laughs> well Peking, Beijing. So anyway, um, free translation of Dufu from memory. A blanket on the ground sounds good to me. Wine, cicadas, sunlight, bread, and you. Instead of this March lion sitting Shiva for himself. Mud ashes, long life tea, my faithful car. A hawk wind carries feathered snow around. Farmer's weather is no picnic. My umbrella failed its physical. Won't open, then won't close. And I'm not feeling built to last myself. <laughs> Wandering inside these sheets of soiled rain, the ghost who traced my wine glass deep in dust, travels in forgotten dreams, grateful to be gone. A spore with no religion drifts. Cloud matter breaks in two. And uh, I'll read, I'm going to read one more short uh, piece about Charles Potts, and, and I'm going to read a, 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 well, another poem, and then I'm going to be gone. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's, this is called Three, 350 Palouse Street. And, and by the way, uh, uh, the, the, the book is thematic, and if you read it, you will know something about Charles Potts, uh, who is, I think, really a secret hero of American 
literature. I mean, and, and not necessarily through the poem, but uh, there is uh, a an essay at the back by uh, Jeremy Galky, who is uh, my co-editor of Four by Two, called Polymath of the Palouse, uh, you know, uh, a, a biographical essay about Charles Pox. But this is called 350 Palouse Street, and he, uh, Charles lived in a, he's, he's moved, but he lives in a, in a he lived in a big, uh, uh, oh, you got coyote back there? Yeah. Yeah, this is a, this is a blue begonia book, right? This is Coyote by uh, Charles Potts. And uh, when he was young, I mean, he, he, the guy is I mean, such a polymath. I mean, that's his spelling, I think, of coyote. And when he was young, he had a whole phonetic system, and he just kind of rewrote the alphabet. And he, since then, he's, uh, he's gone back to more phonetic spelling. But I mean, that, uh, this was only the tip of the iceberg. I mean, <laughs> but that coyote. But uh, um, that, uh, yeah, this is a blue begonia book, and it's uh, highly recommended. And this, and uh, he lived in a he lived in a large Victorian house, and uh, one of his proteges said uh, said you can't write poetry in a house like that. He a young a young guy thought he had to he had to live in a hovel. So anyway, uh, 350 Blue Street, a long list of a man essentialized, bookman, card, iconoclast, good Samaritan, sly boots menace. Hand of doom to April weeds, patriot of tennis. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to read. Uh, there's a poem I I uh, read this uh, for the first time aloud uh, when I, uh, when, I, when I was in Yakima last, and uh, Jeremy uh, Golkey's. Uh, Spoke up for it, and I and uh, it, it ended up in the San Francisco issue of Four by Two, um, and it's, it's called Apples, and that's and it's sort of it's uh, that's the presentation in the in the magazine, and uh, the and it's it's sort of uh, a uh, poem of uh, frustration. Uh, the uh, economic miracle in San Francisco, not so as you'd notice uh, near me. So, um, so it, it's called Apples. Sitting in the small park on Jackson in front, opposite the Safeway, an August sun burning off the haze, I overhear the tour guide say most miners did not make a dime during the gold rush. The money was in merchandise. One apple cost five dollars. That was over 150 years ago, and apples will still set you back. After the Macintosh dropped, Steve and Waz and their techno homies down in the valley lost interest in naming their stylish machines after the pomacious fruit of our national tree with its bewildering array of cultivars from Raymond Carver country to the Frost Preserve. The Andrews sisters hailed from Minnesota, home to Paula Reds and Prairie Spies. Together they made it happen, those pocket protector Johnny Appleseeds in code violating semi-detached garages, stealing John and Paul and George and Ringo's mojo to put their stamp on the envelope of the future, which does not seal and is transparent, but usually boring when read without permission. Jack and Neil ate dessert for lunch at an Oklahoma truck stop diner. Names can harness power or criticize a life. Jobs was not a job creator other than inventing himself. You don't need a biography to know if he had been as big a fan of Dylan as he claimed, he would not have moved his factories to China. The grave remains a fine and private place, and Steve is not available. I am, moving underneath the bay, soon to be delivered to my stop above ground to get my share of the post-democratic summer air. I scratch these lines on paper with a pen, feeling like a reenactor at the long and slow wayfare, panning for gold rhythms 
paying the going rate to age at the edge of the continent in the shade of a literary movement with concrete cracking roots and barren branches, paying the going rate to stake a claim which to someone from St. Louis would seem insane. Truth in advertising, the bite out of the logo that you look at till you no longer see. If you're hungry enough and can scrape together what the market will bear, you buy the apple. Thank you so much.